We're still discussing. Male, body. Now we're going into the female body. The problem is involved in the female body that make it difficult for the male to realize what's going on when we are married, especially in the household life. The female body is designed for factual reaction more than the male body because of the constant contact with children. The mother is always cuddling a child to her. Therefore, the female body has to have more factual experiences. The sense of touch is more developed in the female body than the male body. But sometimes we don't even notice it. We take it for granted. Well, you have, for instance, a child hurts his leg, and the first thing you do is rub it. You say, come, mother, rub it for you. It'll be all right. And when the mother rubs it, the child feels okay and it goes and play again. The sexual contact being so closely related to the mother and the child is carried over constantly in the body. Because when we live so close to each other, we lose this sexual contact. The male body wants sexual contact. It wants to generate the sexual contact. But what interferes with the male body is the, the daily stress that the male body is confronting. The only way the male body and the female body can release this stress is by massage. Now, when the husband and wife were growing up together in the first marriage, this is often felt, but very little of it is done. They need to massage each other. As they grow on and they have their children and the children growing up and going away, that feeling is no longer there. Yet, Inwardly, the feeling is crying out for contact, for this particular reaction. We tend to feel afraid to touch the other person, lest there is a reaction. When in reality, that is where the body needs more sexual contact by massage. The fact that it is contacting the other person by touch, subtle forces are being transmitted between the male body and the female body. Massage is an art by itself. Sometimes to massage someone can change the whole feeling from love to a feel of disgust. Because in a massage, it's not how much you rub that breaks the pressure, but it's the way the 
emotions are brought into action or brought into expression on the body that releases the pressure. If you do this, after a while the individual gets bored with it because there is no, it, there is what is called a peak point of stimulation that it tapers off and becomes an irritation. They become irritable because it is no longer something of release. It brings up the tension. Now, when you place the finger on the body and apply the pressure, and by rotating clockwise and moving along the body, this now causes the release. To get the feel of that sensation. So let's test it so we can understand it. You begin to feel now using the chubby part of the fingertip. Don't put too much pressure, but just... Huh? <laughs> Go in a clockwise action, but never rub it this way, because it builds up a heat and then it tapers off. In this area, you don't build the heat up. You're actually setting circles of motion throughout the body. Now, the first area in the male body that is very sensitive is around the neck. That is why it is the male loves to be massaged around the neck. Because if you do that, it takes the stress off the hip. Now the female body is the same. It takes the stress off their neck. But the female body gets more stress released from around the neck. In the male body, more stress is released from the shoulder. This part here. Well, let's demonstrate it. Right. Somebody want to come up? Oh, 
tell you what it is. Thank 
trade. Oh, you're working. You take all the stress. 
distressed from this fight. They are four primary techniques. And they have a technical technique. We are not too so concerned with this. We are concerned with the primary the primary technique of preparing the hand. A good tactical therapist. A tactical therapist is one who has to develop their hands just like a Yes, the, 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 the,
recognizing your own body, preparing it for a perspective of uh, God alone that is limbo zero, alone and you're flying into the Okay. Now, the primary number one movement is this way. All the time. Now you have to learn to do that individually. Magnetism, you don't have to lay your hands on the magnetism and say I want to start flowing and flowing. 
running the paper like a scratch. We are setting up on the sunny waves along the lines of the river. Yeah, they want to
There is one more, but you have to be very careful with it. And that is the back and forth action of friction. Because it has a tendency to shorten itself up. That is, it builds up heat. But then when the heat is built up, it cuts out sensation. You have to be able to rub it and then stop so as soon as you feel the heat. And not to continue beyond a certain surface and let the heat do the work. It's different. When you rub it, and as soon as the heat starts, then you take it off and let the heat do the work. But if you rub it and rub it and then the heat is building up, the heat itself will cut off. And then there's no sensation going on. You just have to rub it and let, let the heat carry through. That's what they call it. That's why you use a brisk towel. And it's best after a bath to take a rough towel and rub with a good nap. And take it in sections, don't go all the way like that. Take it in sections. And lift, take off in sections. And just give the heat to build up. And I little pockets of heat. And then because they have little pockets, they will dissipate into each other, and then the whole body will be glowing. If, uh, the blood comes to the surface of the skin, and it stays there, and the vitality and the zest, the feeling of the cells, are in a higher state of potency or strength. And it's good to have it after full bath. That's why you find in male and female, the daily embrace tends to after a while taper off because it's a dry contact. There is no emulsion or lubricant contact between the male and the female. It's when you have a lubricant or emulsion contact that the cells are kept in a higher level of potency and yearning for each other and the vibratory nature of love is heightened. If you take cream and you rub it on your face after a while, women have the they do that most themselves. What is the sensation? And yeah, as you're applying the cream on because uh, women are the ones who use more creams on their skin, right? Now the sensation of rubbing cream on the skin is very, very stimulating because the cells are soft and pliable. It has a glassy effect. It tends to stimulate. So when oils are used now throughout the entire body to massage it, it makes the cells more Bible. And that feeling of joy of this is increased. And the body does not tire. That's why the early Greeks and the Roman and the Orientals used to go into their past with scented oil. And the, the scented oil tends to increase the sensation of the sexual massage. Because that's what it's supposed to do. That you would take the bath or you massage the body with the oil and the body itself now has a higher reaction to feeling and contact and then the stress is released quicker because the pores are absorbing the oil or the cream. The best oil for a massage is still an olive oil because it will go right into the blood. If you just run it on the surface it will the right through. Yes, with olive oil. This what we call a uh, osmotic uh, therapy by massage to nourish the body with a small polyunsaturated saturated effect of the oil. And you automatically, by massage, reduce your weight by olive oil. What do you think today? Well, <laughs> weight reduction can be brought on by osmotic uh, absorption of olive oil through metallic.
because it will go in and work on that uh, heavy cholesterol fat in the skin and those layers of the epidermis and break them up by the heat and the massage from the external nature of something you can't break it enough. but they will go right through because this is its normal action it goes in right into the system it's the only oil that has that peculiar ability to olive oil to pass right through but it has to be pure olive oil not the hydrogenated by heat you don't want the olive oil that is being fired by heat it must be pure cold pressed out natural olive oil and that oil will go right into the body when you <laughs> yes, if you use camphor, they'll do that. Now, also, if you use uh, eucalyptus while you're rubbing it, it'll clean out the, the lungs, especially those who smoke. It'll start to work. Inhaling of the eucalyptus will start releasing the stress, the tension, to stop from the uh, nicotine smoking. Rub it on the chest. Yes, uh, they have bright solution uh, that you do that. Yes, we are not coming to that yet. We are, we are jumping the gun. We are trying to go step by step in this process to understand what we are doing. We are not just trying to jump one before the other. We are dealing first with oil. We are dealing with water, but we have to different types of water. First we dealt with hot water and cold. And we dealt with the carbonated water. We didn't deal with the uh, minerals in the water. We are dealing now with oil. If you run into minerals in the water before, they're fine, then you will not, not understand what the body is for. Minerals in the water are designed for illness. <coughs> Their composition is designed primarily for illness. They're not designed for a healthy body. You don't use them in a healthy body. You can swim in salt water. This is okay. But there's a way to use salt on the body that will clean the body and face of illness and prevent illness. So we are not dealing with that right now. We want to understand how the compatibility between the male and the female body is maintained in the household effect or life so that it gives them that understanding of why the male or the female have these conflicts and what can be done to relieve these conflicts. That the body is a living mechanism and it must be nourished by different ways to maintain balance so that the, the rhythm that the body is sub subjected to would not tend to turn off individuals against themselves or one another. If you find yourself being turned off from your husband or your wife because the body's rhythms are predominant due to the, the moon's activity and it's and you don't know what to do, then you get into fits and angles. And before you know it, you want to bite your finger, you want to smoke, or you want to drink, you want to eat more food. Just an ego to get to bigger part. We want to understand why this is happening so that we can now observe and carry it with our daily life. That we can ease the stress of the daily living with the other person. Now, the Eastern philosophy with all faith Familiarity breeds contempt. But familiarity is an indication of tolerance level. We can't have familiarity without a tolerance level. Every object in this world has a tolerance level. That's a level to which it reaches and it's taken for granted. So for what is familiarity? Something you take for granted. There is no more sense of strength in we were trying to strengthen each balance to some degree. That's why in the ancient time we had the, the master lived in one room and the wife lived in another room and the perennial courtship was always going on. The moment they threw away the extra bed and they got into the walk there, the other like uh, going hunting. 
challenge, any new challenge or competition, this is the way the male body gets released. In competition or challenge, in group activity, or trying to go off in the areas and uh, find some type of association with the environment that would free it from conflict camouflaging itself which is not a very practical way. See, camouflaging is not a, a good idea to free the stress. It's better to face the stress. Well, this society today, where you have more and more complex and uh, subtle approaches to conflict or conquest or uh, uh, aggressive actions, yes. has a tendency of building up neurosis. That's the danger of camouflaging. You see, men either run or fought or was subjugated or dominated from primitive time up to civilized time as a dominant life form in the male body. The male body always did this to survive, to react. And if it couldn't react because the opposing force was stronger, it took to flight. If it took to flight and it was not fast enough, it was caught and dominated. If it was strong enough to retaliate against the opposing force, it became tyrannical. If when it took the flight and it avoided capture by ingenuity, it resorted them to camouflaging. So it was the only way it knew how to survive. So the greater the camouflaging, the greater the tendency to become neurotic. See? Because Sooner or later you run out of camouflages. Right, it's on, right, this is it. So if you turn around and face and come back to a point of overcoming the situation, then it breaks that pattern. So the stress is released. That's why Yukishwar said, don't run, face every problem and it will cease to bother you. He was actually trying to stimulate the survival pattern which is built into the sperm already to accomplish. How does Yin Sing affect this? The Yin Sing uh, root uh, stimulates the, the, the gonad action and makes the individual feel more virile so that he can shut off the feeling of impotency or the feeling of inferiority. Now, the impotency is brought on, as I said yesterday or the day before, by certain conditions of not facing up and therefore the tendency to be blocked off. Now, any sensation that depleted, depletes the virility or any condition that depletes the virility of the, the individual's drive tends to produce this impotency. Ginseng is just a natural root or a natural herb action that stimulates that virility action. It's equivalent to vitamin E. But in vitamin E, it's the anti-sterile vitamin. The vitamin E would make the man be more of a, a greater donor and the sperm would have a higher motility action. Ginseng would not do that. Ginseng would give him the sense of bravery or the sense of uh,
capability to handle himself, which is a, a heightened virility. Yes, it would control the adrenaline in the aggressive nature if the ginseng would do that. But you have Adriatica hydrocotyl, which is a better herb for that because it has a tendency to rebuild the, the connective tissues. Adriatica hydrocotyl, which is a better herb, does rebuild the connective tissues. Now, there is another herb which the elephant eats. This herb gives a greater staying power to face problems. It's an anti-stress herb. Right now, the name is what me. I can see right on top of my shelf when they are in the, uh, the herb shop there with the name. Of The elephant eats it. 
school that is pretty and it's an And it goes mainly in uh, India and uh, Sri Lanka. And they bring it into this country now to grow. And they're using it as a food supplement. They're growing it to make food supplements with it. So you can't get all the minerals in their food, or the basic food that you're eating. There are certain minerals that you're deficient in. Like the trace minerals, you don't have them. A great deal of acid is brought up to the ground. And the plant kingdom is the only kingdom that seems to absorb them properly and transport to us without affecting it in a detrimental way. Thank 
you do it too much or too often. When we use the word lust, we are referring to an action outside of the married life with your partner. That is an action outside of that. It's not lust. There is no lust between a married couple. There is no lust between a married couple? This is a norm accepted behavior between two individuals on a mutual consent basis by men, women, and society. How they interact. When the man has taken the woman unto himself and the two have become one flesh, there is no lust. What well, if you don't want to have children? Then you got to go back prior to marriage. What is the cause that he doesn't have that? We have to understand that as the, the norm of that. Well, if you're not trying to have children in marriage, if you're not trying to have children in marriage and you're having sex, is that what? I did not say it was. Yeah, but I don't know whether you said or not, I'm trying to understand it. I said the action that occurs between a male and a female in marriage has nothing to do with lust. This, this is a commitment you've made already. You made this commitment when you were married to each other. This is a commitment you made to each other when you got married. But isn't the ideal state in marriage not to have sexual relationships? Mystical state, the idea, the ideal state of like conserving the energy for meditation and whatnot. To imagine that's what Margaret said. That's what you do about it. The act of sex was designed, or procreation is designed for producing children. But you think, by any stroke of nature, the very first act of sex produces it. Even by a married couple? The chances for a successful ovulation in a female, even in marriage couple, by the very first act of sex, are rare. You know that? chances are rare, then the chances can happen depending on the, what period it happens in the individual. You see, you have a, a, a condition that exists in the male and female situation when they're married. Well, we were told by more than one person that the eye of the state to reach is never to have sex unless you're trying to have children. That's the, that's the you know, like pure state for a mystic to be in. In other words, no sexual relationships for any other reason than as the desire to have children. We cannot discuss that yeah. to the benefit of others unless we understand what is what we are talking about today. Why it is not an ideal state to overindulge in it until we learn the next lecture. We covered something today that's going to show us why you bring up a question, why the masters are talking. You only do it for the procreation of another species. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. The reason why the masters are talking of not having the act if it's not going to produce the human being, because it is what is involved in the formation of those fluids and the time span they are formed and when they are secreted without the purpose of bringing them to completion, what the body goes through. Physiologically speaking, what the body... You, you notice something... We're uh, jumping ahead of the lecture because that's tomorrow. Cut. Here in the gonad area where the formation of it, it's a direct link back to your medulla oblongata.
this is the metal of Langata right here, and the, the, the spinal cord runs right down the air and then connects to the heart area, then connects down into the endocrine system, and then right down into the gonads and the testes, where it's been formed. These fluids are formed here. Now, where is the fluid trapping? What is this? What is this particular organ trapping? Do you realize what it's trapping? To build up the sperm? It's trapping secretion from the brain. Brain cells. And they travel down. They travel down via the medulla to be to be stored up here to form it. And equally through the ovum. I have diagrams of this to show you in detail how it's trapped and brought down. And I can't jump ahead and tell you understand why the, the factors in your life are leading you to, to be abnormal. The act of sex is the least condition. It is the formation of the things that go on inside that make the, the no-no by the masters. You are actually secreting brain cells that are trapped and built up to shape that sperm. Every doctor knows that. So you're like wasting your brain cells. You are, yes, to a certain extent. Throwing away valuable brain cells through a release. But well, if they're down here, yeah? you're always throwing something away. Yeah, but not brain cells. I don't know. You're never throwing it. It's always reabsorbed. The only way it can leave your body is via the organs of the sexual organs. If you have the uh, brain cells stored in the donut, are you having any good use from them if they're down there anyway? I mean, is there any harm in them? If there's, there, there, every day in 24 hours, you are secreting them down your spinal cord right down into that area. It's going right down and be stored up. And it takes three months to form the sperm in the male body from the precipitation of the brain cells. And the amount of brain cells that have to come down to build up in one ounce of secretion and approximately uh, three or four thousand sperm in one ounce of secretion. Now, it takes about three months to build that up. Your body cannot build it faster than that. There is no way your human body can build up that or store that up in a lesser time than three months. So every three months you have actually stored up that much cells in the form of the sperm in the human body and the rest necessary now for release. Now, your cell salts are built around that principle already. We haven't come to all that because we can't, you can't jump into it unless you understand. And you, the woman's body is going through the same thing. Hers is changing in every 28 days. Her brain cells are drawn down faster from her body every 28 days to build up the ovum. Because the ovum also utilizes brain cells. And I bring the chart down and draw it out and show you how the, from the medulla of Longata everything goes right back into the regenerative organs. There is a direct link all the way through. But every doctor will tell you that the act of procreation is merely a mental impression. The feeling is a mental impression. But actually, it, we don't have no sex life unless we are stimulated by the mind. Because the conditions are formed by brain cells. There would be no craving if we were never stimulated. There are substances that are deposited there, secreted out from the brain. So the brain has a lot to do with it. Now the reason why the master is talking that it should only be used for the offspring because other masters are being born, or higher intellect are born, is because if you degenerate the body, you have a degenerate brain and a degenerate circuitry formed to so pull in a lower entity of a lower caliber of consciousness. If you hold your consciousness at a higher level, 
then you attract an entity of a higher consciousness. So the personal discipline on the physical body becomes important. Otherwise the master would not emphasize that. He knows definitely that brain cells are being lost in the discharge of the energy. See, that's the only reason. Now, sublimation of the act is reversal of precipitated brain cells that are stored in the lower regions now that must be pulled up by paraphysical methods to reabsorb itself back into the brain. So you can bring it back now. Well, that's what the technique of sublimation is. We will we, we cover all that. You asked for a tremendous uh, session. We haven't begun to throw the book at you yet. You couldn't even take it. And I don't even think we'll uh, ever cover all of it uh, in this session. Because there's a whole lot of the being a man or being a woman and alone trying to live a household of life. The household of life is taking into consideration every aspect of creation. You can't uh, just uh, up and jump each phase because it is involving our existence, our survival, our economics, our association with each other, and the, the continuation, uh, continuation of the species. The whole soul of life is involved with that. So we have to know how we are constructed. We have to know how these forces are precipitating down in the body. We have to understand how we can waste them and what we actually are wasting. What we are actually wasting is precipitated brain cells. And the brain cells carry all the data inside of this particular makeup. You see, the early disciplines that they lay down on the individual were not laid down just for to thwart the individual or make him uh, into some type of uh, individual that has no feeling and live some sort of a restricted life. Within the married life, it is accepted and understood that it's not possible that in one activity there can be a new offspring. It may take many, it may, not, it may even take one. But this is accepted in that particular arrangement because there is no sense of guilt during the activity with the married person. Outside of it, there is always these two forces, violence or guilt. You see? There is a condition. That's why we are using forces that are formed out of the brain and when we apply certain attitudes to release these forces formed out of the brain electrically we create a distortion and the result can be tragic in the individual's life or in the offspring's life. But we have seen too many of these things at the inner plane you know that premature release by the male body 